Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today we're checking out why is north up? North, up, west, left, east, right, southwest, downy left. How did we end <laughs> up thinking like this? Welcome to Map Men. We're the men, and here's the map. Map Men, Map Men, Map, Map, Map Men, Men. Hello, all maps need a top and a bottom. Although it's theoretically possible to have a map where words are written in multiple directions. Cows, East Cows, Root, Seabiscuit, Frankly, Puck, Ack, Beechridge, Bim, Culver, Up, Culver, Down, Sandy, Larry, The Loafer, Fish, Bastards, Dennis, Shepherd's Pie, Haha, ha, I Made. What is this a map of? Maps that tried this fell out of favour very quickly because they were horrible to use. Luckily, almost all maps today orientate the world the exact same way, with North at the top. Examples include OS maps, Google maps, and this map of all the motorways in Rutland. North as up is such an ingrained Hang idea on. that... So, I love these Map Men videos and Jay Foreman. They're so funny. But the jokes go by so fast, I have to stop it all the time and look it up. And they have all these British references that I don't understand. So if you'll bear with me, I'm going to look this up. I'm sure that was a joke about Rutland. But I've never heard of Rutland. Oh. Rutland is beautiful. Look at that. My god. Oh, it's pretty tiny. There are no motorways in Rutland, I guess, is the joke. Luckily, almost all maps today orientate the world the exact same way, with North at the top. Examples include OS maps, Google maps, and this map of all the motorways in Rutland. North as up is such an ingrained idea that not even J.R.R. Tolkien, creator of Hobbits and Balrogs, could imagine an alternative orientation for Middle Earth. <coughs> So how did it end up being North? And has it always been this way? We're about to tell you, and no. It turns out the hmm. majority of ancient cultures had a 90 degree different view of the world from the one we have today. Really? On their maps, the direction most often facing top was East. The reason for this is down to our hot friend, the Sun. The Sun rose in the East, and because people liked the Sun and were happy when it appeared, East became the most important direction. Okay. Oh, there it is, that's a relief. <laughs> Incidentally, orientated means east at the top, hence orient. Ah. Hang First on. European what orientated you east became the most important direction. Oh, there it is, that's a relief. <laughs> Incidentally, orientated means east at the top, hence orient. Ah. Ah. Most European maps had east at the top until well into the 15th century. South was second most important because of all the sunshine, then west where the sun set, with north actually considered the least significant direction because it was the darkest and generally associated with evil. I gotta stop and check out these jokes again. So there's people reviewing North. One comment, cold and dark, I didn't enjoy it at all. <laughs> Too much snow, wouldn't go there unless I really, really had to. Always my least favorite part of the world to visit, and I live there. Santa Claus. See? The amount of tiny little jokes they put in these videos is just outstanding. I hope they're making a lot of money. To give you an idea of just how North-hating early Christians were, Heretic graves Keith. facing northwards were reserved only for excommunicants and the unbaptized. Uh, excuse me, I did request to be buried next to my dead wife. In other parts <laughs> of the world, we get clues that East was on top, even though no map survived to prove it. In India, the Sanskrit word Dakshina means both south as well as to the right, and if south was to the right, then east must have been at the top. And west must have been on the bottom. Yes. And north hmm. must have been I on think the... we get it. <laughs> but the most famous early civilization saw the world another yet 90 degrees differently. The ancient Egyptians put south at the top of their maps for the simple reason that because the Nile flowed downhill, its source must surely be at the top. Makes sense. It also explains why it's called Lower Egypt, despite being further north. South at oh. the top soon became an Arab map-making calling card, as shown on the famous world map made by Muslim scholar Al-Idrisi for King Roger II of Sicily, called Tabula oh. Rogeriana. Rogers. Matt which featured in the seminal book, Kitab Rujar. Rogers. Book. So, with all this eastness and southness throughout history, how did we end up with the ever unpopular north literally on top of the world? The change in direction occurred at the age of exploration. In the 1400s, wealthy European nations literally started to push the boat out in search of exciting things to steal, like gold and potatoes. In order to do this successfully, navigation needed to get better. And the that North meant Star, the very frequent use of the compass. Ah. By harnessing the Earth's natural magnetic field, compasses were a superbly useful way of letting sailors know where they were going. The original inventors of the compass, the Chinese, decided that this thing pointed south, which in fairness, half of it did. That explains why the Chinese word for compass was... <laughs> which translates to <laughs> pointing south needle. But oh. Western explorers saw things differently. 
In Europe, there was already a long tradition of navigating by the North Star, giving European <laughs> navigators an astrological northern bias. So, when they got their hands on the Chinese pointing technology, they used it to do what they'd always done, and find North first. If you've ever used a compass on a Year 5 geography trip where you got lost in the woods and wet yourself in front of Mr Dugdale, you'll understand how North being at the top of your map makes it easier to turn and face where your compass is pointing. This navigational edge allowed Europeans to spread themselves and their ideas, including North is Up, all over the world. And after centuries of standardisation, North is Up became stuck in the maps and the minds of people all over the planet. So now, North is literally always up all the time on every map ever, with no exceptions. Except these ones coming after the break. Exceptions to North being at the top do sometimes appear on modern maps, in just a small handful of examples. Some cities arranged in a grid form are frequently shown on maps with North on the one to suit the folded paper it's on and uh, allow for better legibility. Manhattan yeah. is a fantastic example of this, creating yep. a false North in the minds of locals and tourists. A similar effect can be found on maps of Melbourne, Mexico City and Milton Keynes. The increasing prevalence of Wayfinder or You Are Here maps in cities is popularising this easy to navigate kind of map, where up is the direction you're facing and not necessarily north. Which is a pity for those of us who are taught to always find north first, like this. Also, sat navs. <laughs> Modern digital maps can be rotated to face whichever way is most convenient or safe for the user, resulting in a generation of whippersnappers who bizarrely are very familiar <laughs> with their local area but entirely unfamiliar with which way is north. But all these exceptions only do a great job of proving the rule, as maps that are even slightly wonky just look disconcertingly unfamiliar and wrong. <laughs> oh. But! Does it matter that North won the day? After all, something has to go at the top. Why shouldn't it be North? The thing is, it does matter. It affects not just the way you view the map, but the way you view the world. First of all, top to bottom is how we read things and naturally take information in. Whether it's a map, or an album cover, or a supermarket shelf, your eyes start at the top and then scan down. And right. this is well known and exploited by designers of all kinds. Beef butter. The texture is worse than the taste. <laughs> Warning. Will make your legs fall off. Pretty random. But funny. Second, and more importantly of all, psychologists have proven that we associate things that are higher up with positivity. Hi, top of the morning. Are you feeling tip top? On top of the world. Did you watch Top of the Pubs? I watched it on my laptop. That one doesn't work. Oh. So if all maps have <laughs> north as up, we accidentally give places in the north a sense of importance and goodness. While places in the south might be viewed with a form of second bestness. Hmm. This applies not just to maps of the world, where Africa and South America are buried at the bottom of the page, and your thoughts, but to maps of London, which for a chippy South London dweller like me immediately explains the unbearable snobbery of North London dwellers like Jay. You don't have the tune. It's because of the rock type. Thankfully, the overwhelming <laughs> prevalence of north at the top maps has irritated some people enough. It's because of the rock type. I would never have thought that something being on the north part of a map would affect how we subconsciously think about it, but I guess it does. Thankfully, the overwhelming prevalence of north at the top maps has irritated some people enough to inspire them to create some different maps that turn our worldview upside down. Why? In 1979, Australian Stuart MacArthur published MacArthur's <laughs> Universal Corrective Map of the World. Simply by flipping the familiar map on its head, whilst keeping the letters the right way up, it placed Australia, usually tucked down under in the bottom corner, proudly at the top. Although, just because it was upside down, it was no excuse for drawing Europe's borders apparently from memory. Looks like it's kind of... it's close, but not quite... Not quite. Reorientating the world to give an original perspective is often done as a political statement, such as in this series of maps of Africa by Swedish non-African Nikolai Jesper Sion. His aim was to show the continent from a different perspective, such as this one that imagines borders if colonialism hadn't happened. And for maximum mind mashing, he made all his maps upside down. One of the most influential wrong way up representations of the world came in 1972 in the form of not a map, but a photo. On the Apollo 17 mission, one of Gene Cernan, Ronald Evans or Harrison Schmidt took a stunning snap of the Earth viewed from space, and when he finally got back in signal range, sent it back to his pals at NASA for them to share with the world. <laughs> wow! The now famous photo, titled Blue Marble, appeared to show planet Earth the wrong way up, with Antarctica on top. But of course, hmm. this photo made us see the world as it actually was, a tiny ball floating in space. Suddenly, the whole idea of a top and bottom began to unravel, and there was chaos in the streets. Sadly, by far the most frequently distributed version of the blue marble photo has been cropped and rotated with North boringly at the top, uh... demonstrating just how fixated on North's upness we all remain. Let's face it, with no gravity there's actually nothing to anchor us in the infinite <laughs> expanse of space. Anywhere can be up, and anywhere can be down. It's a shame that we've got into the habit of always looking at the world the same way, 
Looking at a so-called wrong way up map can make you see things you've been trained all your life not to notice and expand your mind. True. Look at this map of Britain. Until you looked at it upside down, did you notice quite how far Cornwall was from London? Or that Edinburgh was west of Manchester? Wonky maps can be a good way for city planners to spot areas that need attention, or missing transport links. And that's why it's important mm. to question hard and fast rules like North always being up, because when you look at the world from a different angle, you invite new perspectives. You've been watching Map Men, and for now, North is up. Another really informative and funny Map Men video. It's tough to imagine a time when people didn't really know what was outside of their world. There's so much disinformation now, I can't imagine what it must have been like back before people didn't know the Earth was a sphere. It also makes me wonder what our culture would be like if South was North. Would it change the way colonization panned out? Would it change the places that people decided to live? I don't know, maybe. I tend to think probably not, but maybe. What they're saying is that it would. There's a subconscious thing that we have about things that are on the top. Well, another great video from Mapmen. Uh, thank you guys for making this video. It was really funny. Thank you all for recommending. Thank you all for watching. And I'll see you next time. Later.